Pseudo-translation in MemoQ is useful in two different ways. First of all, it enables you to verify that the file you've been given to work on can in fact be imported into MemoQ, and then after you've translated it, that it can be exported again to make a usable target file. Sometimes files may be corrupted, and although they will be imported into a CAT tool, after you've completed your work and it's time to deliver, you may find you can't get the information back out again. Doing a round trip by importing the information into MemoQ, pseudo-translating it, and then exporting it to a target file, and verifying that this target file can be used in the original environment, you can make sure that the file is in order and that you can proceed with your work and deliver your finished translation. The second thing that pseudo-translation is useful for is to verify that all of the words you want to translate can in fact be brought into the working environment. Sometimes files may contain content such as bitmap graphics with words to be translated and this content can't be imported into MemoQ or any other translation tool. By doing a pseudo-translation, importing the file, pseudo-translating it, exporting it again, and then examining that target file to make sure that the entire content has been processed, you can avoid the embarrassment of delivering a file with untranslated content. And if in fact you find that some of that exported file remains in the original target language, you know that that content has to be dealt with in other ways. To configure pseudo-translation in MemoQ, you go under the Tools menu, to Options, and Machine Translation. Here you see a list of all of the machine translation plugins offered by Kilgray. The one that we want is a little further down in the list, so we're going to scroll to it. It's the MemoQ pseudo-translation plugin. To enable it, you simply mark the corresponding checkbox. There are also options available, and if you want, you can determine which characters are substituted for which other characters when you do the pseudo-translation. However, that's not absolutely necessary to use the function. Okay, once you've enabled the plugin, you click OK. And then you go under the Operations menu. Pseudo-translation is a form of pre-translation, so we'll find it under Operations, Pre-translate. And in the pre-translation dialog, you see the checkbox for Use Machine Translation. And in this particular case, we've enabled pseudo-translation, so this is the type of so-called machine translation that will be used in this case. So we will mark Machine Translation, click OK, and then the pseudo-translation takes place. And as you can see, the program has gone through and substituted nonsense characters for the original characters, and prefixed everything with a hash mark, and then put a dollar sign at the end of everything. These are all configurable options, so you can have different characters substituted. And you'll notice that where tags are present in the source, they're present in the target. Where there's bold text in the source, there's bold text in the target. Italics in the source correspond with italics in the target and any other formatting that's present. Once the pseudo-translation has been completed, you can then export your file and then check it and make sure that it will in fact be able to be read in the original environment that created that file. And here you can see it all comes in. All of the translation content has been processed and we know that we can successfully complete this project.